Hi, I'm Jamie Condis, and I'm here to talk about an interesting pediatric phenomenon called breath-holding spells. They're a pretty rare phenomenon. Only about 5% of children get them, and they tend to run in families. So if you've had breath-holding spells as a child, your children might have them too. Basically what a breath-holding spell is, is a child holds their breath as a reflex, not on purpose. They just get a reflex where they hold their breath until they pass out because of something such as a tantrum, they're not getting their way, they're scared of something, or they're shocked or surprised by something. It can look like a seizure, so it can be pretty scary the first time you see one. But with breath holding spells, they never last longer than a minute, and afterwards the child is totally fine. Whereas with a seizure, they may be longer and they may have some other symptoms afterward. So who gets them? They typically start between age six months and two years, and they resolve by six years. So if your child is not in that age range, it's not going to be a breath holding spell. Once your pediatrician diagnoses that that is what it is, a truly breath holding spell and not something more serious, they'll probably give you some tips on how to deal with them. For example, when the spell happens, you do want to time it. If it's longer than a minute, then again, it's probably something else. Sometimes it helps to put a cool cloth or something on their face, that can help, um, making sure that they're comfortable, and just being there for them when they come out of the spell. What do you not want to do? Well, if the spell was precipitated by a temper tantrum, which they often are, you don't want to give in to your child because that may just lead to more spells. After the spell is over, you want to just act as though nothing happened and just go on back to your regular routine. As children who have breath holding spells go back to completely normal and they have no long-term consequences. Once again, if you think that this might be happening with your child, make sure you contact your pediatrician so that you can get the actual diagnosis.